Come on, Rangers! 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 Welcome to Thursday night training at Dorking, six days before their midweek trip to the south coast to face Torquay United. Tonight, Mark is introducing two new players, Joe Cook, a loanee from Chesterfield, and Archie Proctor, formerly of Wimbledon and Accrington Stanley. Archie from Accrington? I've been to Accrington. You've been to Accrington? Yeah, mate. Good to meet you, mate. Mega drive. Do you know each other, yeah? Yeah, we're the uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> the fucking Haverink gang. I'll have a quick chat with these lot. The gaffer is also keen to talk to his defenders in an effort to stem the tide of goals that has seen the Wanderers tot up the highest number in the goals conceded column. Obviously, this is about our defensive situation. That's the bottom line, yeah? OK. We're conceding, you know, two and a half a game. If nothing changed, we'd have to score three goals to win a game of football, which ironically, you know, we, you know we've been on, been on the end of these three, two defeats and three alls and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Three goals at times is not enough to win a game. Now, obviously there's a big responsibility for those boys that play in front, but we, we have to try and look at it broadly and say, well, this unit is not working. My dream is all of you stay here, not just this year, next year, if I can make it 10 years, I'd make it 10 years. Sustaining our status in this league is fucking crucial. The boys have come in to but give strength to this department. To embrace the boys, yeah, and you lot really put up a bit of a show at the moment, okay? Cook definitely is gonna come straight in. And then Proctor, I'm hoping, we see very quickly that he, that he won't be far behind him. And then the other boys have just got I got to sort their shit out. They're, they're, they're my boys. I fucking love them. No one wants them to do well for the club more than me. Not just because of the club, but because they're people that have got us here. But now it's a case of look, club comes first. 16 games in, we need these boys to step up. Torquay, a popular seaside town in Devon where I can remember my dad's Vauxhall Viva breaking down in 1984. Although, truth be told, the Viva broke down in pretty much every town it attempted to take us to. More pertinently to this story, Torquay United were formed in 1899, and today they are anchored to the foot of the National League table. We'd normally give a bit more detail on the clubs that we visit, but they wouldn't let us in to shoot any B-roll at Plainmore, so we're kind of limited today. Indeed, for this fixture, Bunch of Amateurs is a one-man crew. It's just me and two cameras for the most part. For the wise old men at Torquay United, don't like GoPros anywhere near their club for reasons we have yet to fathom. And I'm not allowed near the pitch either. To call this shoot a challenge is an understatement. Still, we persevere. Rejected from the club, we head to the team hotel, where the players are meeting for pre-match food, and Mark is discussing his plan of action with the coaches, who were able to take time off to take the three-hour road trip down to Devon. For as professional a setup as Mark has created at Wanderers, it's easy to forget that pretty much everybody here has a day job, and away trips in midweek are a bit of a headache for those who have used up all their holiday allowance. So the gaffer has just three of his trusted lieutenants on hand as he discusses the merits of intensive pre-match warm-ups. I always remember I worked for a bloke called Steve John, right? He was fucking brilliant at sales and sales leadership. He used to say to me that the key thing is, Mark, everything evolves a little bit and never be too stubborn with your own whatever. And my warm-ups, Mick Daniel, the scouser, his warm-ups, like literally, mate, you felt like you played a game, you felt like you played. Mm. I was just sitting in a changing room like that, mm. fucked before the game, right? But I'm telling you now, these other teams are doing shit, nothing. Maybe we'll just trial it, just say, lad, we're doing less, so when we're doing less, put in more, and maybe we just get them into that relaxed mindset, because obviously they are quite professional these days, and they're all fit as butcher's dogs. So you'd like to think when the whistle goes, they're off and running now. But it'd be interesting to see, because for me, I used to like doing it to players for the mental bit. We to say what we have got, we're, we're fucking unbeaten midweek in this league. Yeah. Maidstone, Barnet, Woking. We've had some great evenings. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So hopefully another good one. Um, 
and then we get over the fucking clock tower later, do some shots. <laughs> there is a clock tower. I'm loving it. I think the players are as well, but I don't think it's sustainable. You know, I think if you get through this season and then breathe again, and then next season you're sort of, you know, you're older on a Tuesday night, I think there'll be a, there'll be like a pinch point of where a player thinks, you know what, I've enjoyed this, but this is tough doing it like this. I think, I think you can sight see this way, and, it, and ironically, it does feel like the sight in Torquay, the sun shining, right? But I think you can sight see the league this way. You can really enjoy it. We're all enjoying it. You, me, everybody, um, and I think a lot of the historic players are. The boys that have been here a while have enjoyed it, but I don't think it's sustainable. I think um, you've got to try and ignore the the um, the marginal gains that go against you. I think you've got to try and ignore those as well because there are things that, that really do go against you. Uh, I think I've watched their recent games, the crowd get right on their side and the crowd will never keep them out of the game. If, if you're tuning up, and they score a goal, that crowd will make it seem like they're going to win 4-2. And what we need is experienced leaders on the pitch <coughs> that know how to manage the boys in those situations. Now to slow a game down, I think we're very poor at game management. That's our biggest weakness. We're just, I like what that Darren called us at Woking, he said, we're gunslingers. We are gunslingers. We are literally like, let's go then mate, put them up, let's go but we're not smart enough and we need to learn how to be streetwise away from home. And now back to Plainmore, Torquay's ground, where we're not allowed to join the players in the dressing room until 6 p.m. because that's what Torquay have decided. So in return, if you work for Torquay and you want to watch this episode, we'll not allow you to watch it until it's 6 p.m. on whatever day you're watching it on. I'm gonna get started. Get started, okay? In terms of this team, I'll tell you about our team in a minute, our 16. We've got a lot of games coming up, yeah? A lot of games coming up. Obviously, we are, Joe, always, people aren't used to looking at gaffers, but I'm fucking fussy as fuck about that shit, Joe. It's always stirring me when you don't play, right? So, um, we've got a lot of games coming up, yeah? And um, the beauty of our squad at the moment, we've left about, what, six? We've left about six at home tonight, yeah? And on top of that, you know, about three of those could have played, so they're disappointed. So if you're in the 16, you're doing well, yeah? But luckily, the thing about this club is I genuinely know that very quickly, you two will realise that like all you give a fuck about is us winning. And that's really what matters because our success is, it's a together success. One day, one centimetre plan, then it's the next bloke. He gets injured, he does a great job. That's what it takes to be successful, yeah? So obviously they've, they've whacked all the shot. Derby County couldn't win here Sunday. They're a team that just play old school football, put the ball in last thirds, join in, take the chances. It's no coincidence that they've had a, a good little run at home, their fans get behind the goal, right? And, and that's what, that's really, it's hot air. So their tiny bit of resurgence is hot air. But what they'll try to do is the basics really fucking well, because really, they're just gonna send it long to these two. Ball's gonna be chucked at them. And this is gonna be a simple joining in job, joining in job massively joining in job, this guy, number eight, Lapsley. Our shape today is a back four. We're four, four, two out, four, five, one in, okay? So in possession, we're gonna try and create three V2s, okay? What they have got is a bit of heart, yeah? A home crowd, you know, and they're having a bit of a resurgence. They're the bottom of the league, and they're bottom of the league for a fucking reason. But they've got a manager, stay with me all of you, they've got a manager, that knows how to win football matches, and he's playing to percentages. Chuck the ball to two, two fucking lumps. They're both scoring goals. A boy that plays behind them, Lapsy, that's dangerous. If we just get our football game and we just do what we do, we're going to create lots of chances, okay? I need the subs and the boys to be absolutely ready at all times, okay? And then we'll go from there, okay? That's it, yeah? Feel the, feel the rhythm, feel the ride. It's bobsleigh time. Yeah, we come and watch Torquay. We follow Dorkin on uh, YouTube and that. So, yeah, we thought it was a good opportunity to come and see him play. Well, we've been, we were a football league team and we've been relegated from the football league twice and we went down as far as the um, National League South and we've been back in this division. I think this is our third season. I think personally they should be in the next division up, but I do believe um, that they're 
favoured position as we know there's not much difference between the top of this division and the bottom of the of League Two. Um, I'd love to think that we could hold our own in League Two again once as we used to. Um, but it's such a difficult one to get out of. This is such a competitive league. It's been going right actually, yeah. We have some ups and downs and yeah. Very tough, ravaged by injuries, a very young squad. Squad was very much depleted from last season. But we we've always had faith and the team's coming good just as we're about to play you guys. What kind of football do they play? Not too sure. <laughs> it's like watching Brazil. <laughs> no, we're, we're, quite, we're quite a fast flowing team. We've recently changed our formation. We're, we're quite prepared to boot the ball long when we need to, but we're starting to use our wings now, which is good. Very direct. And uh, the last few seasons, they seem to play very direct. Long ball. <laughs> long balls. Very long balls. <laughs> Today I'd like to see um, a similar performance to that that we had um, against Oldershot last week and again on um, uh, um, Sunday against um, Derby. Um, so much more confidence, we look much more solid at the back. Um, a proper side, a proper football inside for a change. We've capitulated on so many occasions and goals have been scored against us earlier in the season that the players are looking around, they're surprised there's been a goal and you think, well, we can see it from up here that it's coming. I don't know why you can't, you're a lot closer to it than us. Star players I should be looking out for? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a great new loanee called uh, Dylan De Silva, who's a Sri Lankan international, no less. He's fast, he's come from QPR, and he'll get the ball, uh, get the ball in the box. We, 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 we know very little about this lot because we've never seen them play before, but what we do know about sides that come from in and around the London area, um, the home counties, etc., that they manage to pick up good players from league sides um, and they will have good low knees um, that don't want to come down to places like us where we're a bit distant down here. Um, and um, normally they've got a good smattering of players. Um, never are we, we, we're, we're always, always pleasantly surprised at how good they are, whatever side comes up from uh, the lower division and uh, these, like Sutton, I'm sure will give us a good run. High over though to be good. So like, if we're, if we're coming back across, what a club boys. It was fucking club this boys, I tell you that mate. Do you know what I'm saying? What's that League One like, Arch? Big divide, I think, like the top 10. <laughs> Like a step above the rest, and then it's a bit of a fight for the rest of it. Top ten, you've got some. Your boys into the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the rest are hanging on for dear life every year. A bit like this league, to be fair, mate. He was warming up a back three. It was in front of the tunnel. It's probably for show. If it is a back three, they're the blues. Yeah, that's brilliant. Even better. So we won't change. We won't go to a back three at all. Not unless for some reason we're struggling to play. But there will be. If they go to a back three, there'll be no overloads on the pitch, Dan Lincoln. Where's Dan Lincoln? There'll be no overloads. What that means is your speed of thought has got to be very good. Great warm up, we're ready to be fair boys, we're ready. No big war cry needed, brilliant warm up. Great fucking atmosphere in the camp. The main thing here is fucking defend properly, especially first five minutes. If I'd rather a foot go through it at times if need be, yeah? But if you're talking to the bloke next to you, and he got a bit of time, that'll help him, because we want to get the ball down the play. Nicky Wheeler will make it stick. Feet, easy, done, and then he'll set, and we'll play. Bosh, okay? All right, boys, let's get a good start. Maka, turn him around, okay? Let's go, lads, say, let's fucking go! With the game taking place four days before Remembrance Sunday, there's a very touching pre-match rendition of the last post, followed by a minute's silence. Only the crowd and Bobby Joe were rather confused about how the song was supposed to lead into the minute silence. I haven't done the minute silence yet. Fucking shambles. Turn them round. One nil. Ed, can you be in charge of the warm ups for us? It's on warm-up duties because, like a bunch of amateurs, Mark is a little short-staffed. And with Torquay objecting to the use of GoPros and microphones anywhere near the goals, we're using fewer cameras than we did even in the very first episode of Dorking Uncovered. But we think we've got the story nailed. And we've found the Torquay footage to use for any replays of any goals, should any go in. 
It was either that or Sabutio reenactments, and we're still tempted to try that. Good, good, Jimmy. Forward! Jimmy, brilliant, mate. Dorking is starting with a back four for only the second time this season, meaning Samuel Abd is partnering new loan signing Joe Cook at centre back with Dan Gallagher on the right and Bobby Joe Taylor on the left. They've gone home twice. Yeah. I've just dropped in a low block. Yeah, yeah. It's just about them first balls. Yeah. It's just about them first Ooh. balls to break the lines. The brave ones early. Yeah, it's got to be quick. The two sides' approaches to the game are quite stark. More often than not, Torquay goalkeeper Mark Halstead is hitting the ball long with his target men looking to pick up the loose ball, while Dorking are aiming to play out from the back in spite of the home side pressing them high up the pitch. With four at the back, Dan Lincoln should have options to play out to, although once Dorking do have possession, Mark doesn't want to see his side play it backwards. Jimmy, looking for your feet, he is. No, no, give it him feet. Jimmy! Jimmy! Oh, mate, Niall! He's got 15 yards in front of him, he's played to the centre half. Housted's kicking is somewhat inconsistent, although the sheer volume of hoofs means there are going to be times when the ball comes straight back at him, leading to chances for Dorking. Keep it! Keep it! What a chance that is! And sometimes Housted's kicking works in Torquay's favour. Joe Cook does enough to put Will Goodwin off and Dorking get to build again. Are they leaving that? Are they leaving that? Are they going in? Where's their back for? Yeah, so the forwards having to drop in, see that? 19. We have just realised that former BOA sponsor, ProDirect, have found a way to sneak back onto our channel using the side of the dugout. We're not happy about that, as FC Football Kids is our current channel sponsor. So, using cutting-edge computer graphics, we're going to fix that right now. Heh, <laughs> sorted. Wanderers are enjoying spells in the Torquay half, but have yet to get in behind the defence. When their attacks break down, United get the ball forwards as quickly as possible and hope that something falls their way. Torquay midfielder Tom Lapsley plays a 1-2 off the referee and even though his pass would have gone to Josh Taylor, supposed to stop the, game. the ref lets play continue. Oof. There was no change in possession. There was no change in terms of they still had possession of the ball. He would, he, he, he would have lost control. If, if it hadn't hit him, he would have lost control of it. I know what the law is. With 10 minutes gone, Dorking are having little trouble repelling the Torquay attacks. Dan Lincoln, surely. They just need to get their own pattern of play on point. And I need to make sure I stop looking at my phone when filming. Dan's rollout to Niall McManus leads to more regret than 10 minutes ago when I attempted to take our oversized cat outside, only for him to respond ferociously and mercilessly as he insisted that he is in fact an indoor cat and will never again choose to see the light of day. And to his credit, he did once live on the streets of Croydon, so who can blame him? Anyway, Dillon De Silva finishes into the left corner. I did it all the time. Don't be looking in there, tell him. Well, go on, win it, win it. Squeeze him, squeeze him in. Dan! Totally dominating the play there. I'm trying to fucking do 140 mile an hour to a midfielder. I think he had his back to goal even. Relax, back! There's no sign of the Torquay goal negatively affecting Dorking's players. On the contrary, their forward play has a bit more zip about it now they're a goal down. Tom Lapsley's inadvertent but still very real trip on Jimmy Mewitt in the box is met with the referee's cold shoulder. 
And while we are big fans of Aji's officiating, we can't help but feel he'd overturn this decision if VAR came into play. Deliver! 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 What a fantastic ball, son. That's fucking brilliant. They've gone three for three. They've got to deliver it. Dorking and knocking at the door like a gutter cleaner looking for extra work. If only they could get the ball to Nick Wheeler so he could try a trademark shift and shoot. No foul, no. Aside from the goal, Torquay haven't managed to threaten Dan Lincoln at all. But in reality, perhaps they're just waiting to break down a dorking passage of play before it gets going. Dan Gallagher does enough to put Stephen Wien Wern off, and Lincoln makes a crucial save. They're playing too many backward passes. Dorking have an extra man in midfield, aka a midfield overlord. Overlord. <laughs> Thanks, autocorrect. But they're not making the most of it. Still, they can always go a bit more direct. Overlord. You're in, Sega! You're fucking in! Go on, son! Line, have a look at this, please! Sega tries a Klaus Jensen chip, but it doesn't come off. And Mark is keen to help Joe Cook get used to his very prescriptive style of play. Joe! That's okay, listen! When it's tight, drop Jimmy! Jimmy, when it's tight, they're looking for you! The Torquay penalty area is ram jammed. If only they could get the ball to Nick Wheeler for another long range effort. We do need to point out that the Torquay fans have been rather mean to Mark. <laughs> but our limited recording equipment hasn't picked it up. Suffice to say, he's enjoying a spot of vengeance. And some of them apples. How do you like them apples? Some of the Dorking players who are not Nick Wheeler insist that this shot took a big deflection. But Nick likes to think it went straight in. There's a hundred odd fans that know they asked for that. And while some are taking it in good spirits, others, including our friend Luca, are not so impressed. If I score, I've got to fucking run for miles. <laughs> Although the Torquay players are oblivious to Mark's antics, they're trying to score as if they know that he's waving an imaginary fishing rod around. Listen up, listen up. If you, Dan, the, 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 you've given him back to goal, he's got his back to goal, and he's got to take, listen, he should do better. The point is, he should do better, 100%. The point is, when you're having a good spell, rule of thumb is, keep the ball on the outside of him, be neat and tidy. You've then done it brilliantly. Uh, sort of 20 minutes later, you waited, waited, didn't have it there, and then you saw Macca, and you gave him a great little ball, overload. So, I think you've had a really good half, a really, really good half. Black goals come, we just don't need to play in tight. Now, here's the big deal. Cookie, Sammy, you boys are back. You've got to stop the backwards passes. You've got to stop it. You've got to stop it. The only time to go backwards is if you know it changes the landscape. So if you know, if Cookie goes back to Dan, because he wants to give it to Sammy who's free, no problem, yeah? But it's got to be like, we can't go backwards because we can't find a forward option. Because when it does, Dan's got no option. I think you've done really well under pressure. I'll give you credit. If we're going back to Dan, and Dan's probably got the same option that you had. <coughs> right? Now listen, I'll be patient with the 3v2 overloads in midfield. Right? They're blocking off Bobby. That's why he's not touched the ball. Yeah, Bob? He's just blocking you off, yeah? Should I come deeper now? I'm basically I think that side, that side is good for us. I think Nicky's literally got this full back all over the place. Midfield... 
Do not switch off defensively. Okay, do not switch off defensively. You must be fucking good here. Right, you must be fucking good here, Jimmy. That fullback, right, let me tell you something. He wants you in your half. Right, and he's really, oh, I've noticed him, right? The minute he's got you in your half, he comes alive, mate. You must get him in his own half. He don't want to be there, Jim. Okay, come on, lads, same again. Come on, come on. Keep going, boys, good. James McShane is so good at football, he's decided to see if he can play a whole half while pretending that his hand is glued to his neck. Come on, boys. Let's fucking go. Do we need to talk about football kits this week? We've done quite a bit with FC Football Kit, what with pasting in that image every time that shot comes up. It's taken actually quite a lot of editing time, so um, um, if you're from Torquay, you might have missed this, but FC Football Kit make really good football kits, possibly better than Pro Direct. Stop passing backwards! Hey, hey! New lad Joe Cook is doing an excellent job at the back, although his distribution will need some tweaking. Jimmy, there he is, there he is, Joe, well done. His feet would have done, Joe. Both teams have started the half on the front foot, although it's Dorking that once again looked the more dangerous side coming forwards, particularly with Josh Taylor driving on, like that unstoppable train in the movie Unstoppable, where the train stops. Switches on, switches on. Yeah! <laughs> Flowing counter attack sees Taylor pick out Seeger's smart run and he tees up Jimmy Mewitt, who in turn gives James McShane, who has disappointingly let go of his neck, a chance to finish. Although he once again tries to make something too easy, be a bit harder by chipping the ball up first. Watch the runners! Runners! Second! Torquay's long balls are swatted away, giving the Wanderers a chance to flow forwards like it's early 2022. Go on, Bob! Sammy! So here! Sammy! We feel the hole! Miles there. Great ball! Great ball! Yeah! In celebration, Bobby Joe points at the section of fans who mocked him for the TikToks that I make, which as an aside makes me feel a bit bad. Still, when Dorking is scoring goals as good as this, it tends to put a stop to such mockery. Nick Wheeler's world-class cross drops into the six-yard box, meeting Jimmy Mewitt's right foot on the volley and nestling nicely into the corner. That's the tea bag. You fucking hate that, Mitch. Going for time. Moro. Warm up, mate. As Mark comes up with a plan to shuffle his team around, Bobby Joe thinks he's noticed something. Knack her off. We put the nile on. Put the legs on nile on. Yeah, Bob wants a Bob wants a. Top, top. Top, top, top the whole game, he's off his tits. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> that's that's all right. top, top the whole time. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's staying up now, yeah. That's all right, don't worry. This club, I don't know how to fuck this club means anything. Bobby's saying they've gone 4 3 3, yeah? Which yeah. means we'll have an overload at the back, won't they, we? They're playing the same way they've been playing the whole time. Well, I think Bobby's heard sank. Well done. Yeah. What they're well doing done, is, then. yeah. Right, but listen, they need to know, Dan Slav, if, if this is the case, they're 4 for 3 go and tell Dan that we have an overload at the back. We have one here now. Just going, forward! He's just got to play the wingers. Look, they're here. The overload is here now. Torquay's goal scorer, the QPR lone E, Dillon De Silva, is clearly the danger man and as such Torquay's main target of play. Regardless, he's not getting in on goal and Dorking are looking for a killer fourth. Feet forward! Round the corner, round the corner. <laughs> forward! Oh, what a touch that was. There's Miles on, yeah. He's on, he's on. Nicky goes to pole, son. Jimmy. Goes to pole, Jimmy. Miles, stop a bit. Oh, oh lucky, what a ball. Is that Nicky again? Uh, Jimmy Mewitz can't quite convert the opportunity and Torquay remain just about in touch with the visitors at two behind, with De Silva now the singular focal point for their attacks. The latest crossfield ball lands on De Silva's head, but he's got no chance of looping a header over Dan Lincoln. 
Bobby, great talking, mate. Tell Danny's out. Look, look, it's, look we're, we're out, it's 2v1. Jimmy Spear now, look. I don't know why I didn't turn the camera back on the play here. Believe me, I'm just as annoyed as you are. But uh, De Silva's in. Ball to Ryan Seeger is nicked by Mark Ellis and Tom Lapsley immediately looks for De Silva. With Bobby Joe out wide, where he's supposed to be, we might add, De Silva has an open run at goal. Bobby! Bobby! Don't leave him! Bobby! Bobby! Open body! Dawkins' philosophy is normally to defend by attacking, but that fourth goal remains elusive. Oh, and the hat trick seeking De Silva remains a threat. Thompson. Well, I'm Jimmy! Ellis's late challenge on Josh Taylor's ankle may well have ramifications for both this fixture and those to come. At the very least, it's not helping Mark figure out how to manage the game to a successful conclusion. Izzy, what's this one into that? Just got smashed a minute ago, didn't he? Izzy, Josh's ankle. Look at Josh. Beardy, Josh's ankle. Yeah, struggling. Ellis is not the only one throwing his weight around. He can't even run, is he? Yeah, yeah, he's gone down. He's fucked. Taylor is limping, and Jimmy the Flying Quaver Mewitz has been scythed by a Lucas Ness challenge that's also destroyed the soul of his teammate, Dylan Crow. Change it for Josh. They've gone to a front three, so we've always got a spare one, but I think your best bet now is to settle the whole game down. You can win this game by settling the game down for me. Okay, mate. Mark doesn't know whether to bring off Niall, Macker, Taylor or Mewitt. No, we need to know. Is he OK? 100% because we're about to change now. The game is running at a fast pace and Torquay have Dorking penned back with Seeger hoping to lead the counter charges. Oh, I see. Go on! It's done, it's done, it's done! Send it! Get up! Up! Seconds in here! Seconds in here! There we go! Great head off. Switch! Good boys, get up! Bobby, get his shame! Bobby, shame! Though he insists that he's fine, the Dorking bench think that Jimmy's injured, and so he's the one to make way, not Josh Taylor. Jimmy's coming off! Jimmy's coming off, okay? Do it now, soon as. Yes, Sig, spin! Sig, spin! Second! Okay. Oh. There it is! There it is! Stand up! Stand up! The ref's over. We've seen some really bad goals this season, but this one might well be the worst of all. Cook's clearance is unfortunately sliced upwards, and Mark Ellis beats Dan Gallagher in the air to lob Dan Lincoln as if he were a late 2000s Paul Robinson. Hugely frustrated by the loss of the lead, Dorking go for it, hoping to find redemption. Torquay also sensed the chance to get three points, especially when Aaron Jarvis breaks down the right and crosses for Will Goodwin. Dorking survive and the end-to-end -end game is about to go to the other end. That triple, that triple tablet. 
Get us up! Up! Go on, finish! Oh, McManus does brilliantly, but he's thwarted by Mark Halstead. <laughs> Meanwhile, new boy Archie Proctor is getting his first taste of life at Dorking. He's always looking behind you. Yeah. Oh, what is it? Don't fail. Don't fail. Come in, Bob! Oh, fuck it now! Get the centre half back! Get the centre half back! Okay. Good. Mark's remembered what happened at the end of the Woking game, and he wants to make sure that Sammy and co. don't get caught on the break again. Sammy! Think about last time! Drop back in! Drop back in! Defend! There's that pass again, as Torquay looked to the loaned youngster to win them the game. It's hard to blame them. Get in, Nicky! Get there! Get, get there, Nicky! Get in, Nicky! Get in, Nicky! Get in, Nicky! Get in, It's a baptism of fire for Archie. And United are incensed when the referee won't give them a penalty when Jarvis falls over while seeking out De Silva's exceptional pass. Although we can't really see what it would be given for. Sammy, leave it! Get Sammy up the pitch! Sammy! What's he doing? Oh! Oh! Fuck me. Just to be clear, if you don't think we've heard the words stick that on your fucking TikTok before, we have. Fine fucking margins, boys, man. Fuck me. Yeah, look, we'll be disappointed with that, won't we? 3-1. The goals we scored were fucking excellent. The goals we scored were fucking... All three goals in that game are good fucking proper football goals. It's just fine margin. Bob, you've had a great game. Like, and, and I totally understand you don't expect us to lose it in a simple area. But the bottom line is, at 3-1 up, we've got to have the game in front of us. We've got to have our man in front of us. Do you know what I'm saying, mate? Like, because... And these are the fine margins... Dan, I think you're thinking about coming for the punch and you're neither, you're neither coming for it or on your line. So you're sort of no man's land lobbed, you know, equally. I need to watch where the first bit of that comes from. Do you know what I mean? Because the goalie, the goalie's the first person you look at. I mean, it's a fucking, to be fair, it's a fucking hell of a header to score from there. You know what I'm going to say? We have to score statistically four goals to win a game in this league. That's the fact. We are conceding at about 2.7 a game. So three goals a game gets us a draw, like tonight. We need to score four goals a game to get three points in this division. That's the fact. And that is a, you know, I mean, I might have won a few fucking leagues, right? But I ain't fucking worked out how to score four goals a fucking game. That, at, at this level, it's hard. Joe, listen, you haven't played in a fucking month for Sundays. I was really pleased, to be fair. And I'll, don't ever get young myself. But I'll get young with you before anybody does, I promise you, right? So if I say it's all right, it's all right, OK? And you've not even done our patterns and shit like that. But I really felt tonight that Ed needed a rest, you know, and I felt like Sammy would help you. And you're brand new. You've barely played a fucking game. You don't know how, after two minutes, you'll know the sort of little balls we play. Dan, I thought we'd done really well out of position. Uh, but we'll take the point. You know, we'll wake up in the morning and go, look, we've got a point. We've got three boys that are fresh as fuck to go for Saturday South End. Right, that's where we are. We go again, yeah, OK? So I know a lot of you are driving home. Make sure the gear goes in the right way. And uh, we'll just have to accept the point. Simple as that. Um, now you looked over at me five minutes before the end and we just shrugged at each other because it's like, what can you do? All of the talking, all of the planning, getting new players in and still three terrible goals. Just fucking shit. In the, in the opposition half, we're like a top five side. Really, we're scoring enough goals to be a top five side. The goals we scored tonight were like good goals. They were proper goals. Like literally silenced the crowd. That's like the first time away from home I've been in a position and thought, Cool, they're quiet now. Because they weren't just like, you know, they weren't just goals. They were goals of good, good play, good wing play, interchanges, you know, back to front. Um, but we just um, we just can see goals. We need to score on paper 
factually, we need to literally score factually four goals to win a game. Is that fuck it? Should we do the hotel? Uh, we're going to have to. I can't. Let's do the hotel. Do you want to like hand out with this? Mitchell! Uh, Mitchell! Sit down, mate. After Torquay turned the lights off and stopped us from doing our post-match interviews, we went back to the hotel where Mark's microphone had stopped working and I didn't realise. We, um, we go out and just leave the door wide open and we just make, we're just at the moment at the back, we're not a 90 minute team, either in defensive qualities or decision making, that is the difference because you look at it and go, right, Dan Lincoln's not had a great game, but he's done loads well. You know, Joe Cook, you know, he's not had an amazing game, but he's done loads well. And what I'm noticing is now, you need 90 minute players. Yeah, it's, it's one of those, uh, you know, we we sort of need to learn from those sort of mistakes we have. I, I can take accountability, like we say, for the second goal. Um, being expansive like we are, which we need, you know, we, we've been working on trying to get better at. But Bobby, you, you can ask nothing more from a player, to be honest, and operate integrity. And do you know what he does? He, he puts his hand up. We ask him to do things, and he's always trying to improve. I think I think it's always fun and enjoyable to play in this football team. To be honest, the way we play is, you know, is it's very suitable for me. I think, you know, I really really enjoy it. Um, but you also have to take uh, responsibility for things. You know, I'm the first person to put my hand up, you know, and it, it's a mistake that I would like to think that wouldn't always happen. I don't think many managers or teams have out-tacticaled us. Barely any. I think they've had players that can, you know, can, can, can capitalise on our weaknesses better than what we faced before. But I think almost, bar one or two, out of all the games we played and we're 16 in, whatever it might be, we've picked the right team, relatively done the subs right. Um, so it's good being up against them. To be a successful side, you need healthy competition. You can't get complacent with the fact that you might play every week. And the bottom line is, we, we can't, you know, we like, like the gaffer has said, we've got to score four goals a game for in order for us to win. You know, we get three goals away from home, you should win the game. Um, and we have got to stop leaking leaking goals and that comes down from, from all of us. Like, we're happy to take that. You know, the, the defenders, whether you're playing or not, we, we're happy to, to take that one on the chin. That's part and parcel of football and you have got to try and make, you know, you've got to make it right. All right, and finally, I mean, we never touch on this. We're not that self-referential, but I am interested to know because Bobby was saying they were shouting you tick at him from the sidelines. You had a fair bit of that today. It's not something I saw coming. It's not something I ever thought would be an issue. And I'm not saying it is an issue, but I do wonder what that's like for you to have those extra eyeballs and to have people know who you are before you turn up when a lot of managers, the other team wouldn't even know what they look like if they slapped them in the face. Is that affecting you in any way? Do you enjoy it? Do you dislike it? How do you feel about it? Honestly, I honestly could not give a fuck. I'm not going to lie. I could not give a fuck less if I tried. I love it. Because where we come from the park leagues, you know, we were brawling in the brawling in the recreation park. You know, we were, you know, jumping behind fences and, you know, you name it. Like, you know, that's where we come from, the club. Like, you know, so I fucking love it. Like... Yeah, for me, you know, I'm like a sort of like, I'm not that guy that gives it and can't take it. So, like today, I sat there and I took it, and at 1 0, it's some fucking serious shit being said, right? Yeah. And I just thought, yeah, go on, wait till we fucking score, do you know what I mean? And uh, when we scored, I give them it and they, and they couldn't take it. They were fucking handing out hankies in the fucking audience, literally. They were buying fucking Kleenex, right? And um, but that's what it's all about. But a few of them at the end come down and they got it and they smiled and shook hands, do you know what I mean? And that's what football's about. You know, like you fucking, you give it, you take it, that's how it is. So like, personally, I could not give a flying fuck about anything like that, like literally do not give a shit, do not give a shit at all. Um, I like the fact that the attention's on us, I, I fucking love that, so that's where it should be. This episode is over 26 minutes longer over on Patreon, and we would say that's the definitive version of this episode, so it might be worth checking that out, there's loads more stuff in there. 
Otherwise, just hit like, hit subscribe, and leave a comment because those three things are what help the channel grow. And it's better than making the episodes 12 minutes long, which is what YouTube would rather we did.